Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and today we are installing Kubuntu 18.04. Alright everyone, so Ubuntu 18.04 LTS came out yesterday. I already made a video installing vanilla Ubuntu, but I've seen a lot of people around the internet even more excited about some different flavors of Ubuntu. Most of the different versions of Ubuntu come with their own respective desktop environments. And personally, my favorite desktop environment to use is KDE Plasma 5. The KDE version of Ubuntu is called Kubuntu, and generally I would recommend staying away from Kubuntu if you actually want the best KDE experience. There are rolling release options like KDE Neon or even Arch. Solus is working on a KDE version as well. And of course, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is another one. But if you really do want an Ubuntu base for whatever reason, and you're stuck on this classic idea of having one version of all your packages for several years, Kubuntu is still around and we're going to install it right now to see just what the experience is like from the perspective of a KDE fan such as myself. All right, and here we are on the desktop. I'm going to go ahead and turn my computer on. We'll see my BIOS flash by in a moment here, and we should boot into our flash drive by default. Actually, I'm going to hit F10 for my boot menu, type in my BIOS password, and we'll just select my flash drive. All right, we've got ISO Linux. And after our accessibility options go away here, I'll have to go into that one time and see what's actually in there. Uh, but we should load up soon with the Kubuntu splash screen. There we are. Looks a little bit different from the standard Ubuntu splash screen. All right, and we've got a KDE desktop here. Interesting. So very similar to regular Ubuntu. We've got the options to either try or install right now. We're going to go ahead and click try today because I actually want to fix my screen resolution. It's set to um, a 16 by 10 aspect ratio right now. You might be able to see everything is a little squished. We're going to fix that before we install for your viewing pleasure. So here is our Kubuntu, or uh, sorry, our KDE Plasma loading screen. And here is Plasma itself. All right. If you haven't tried out Plasma in a while, it's changed a little bit. It's mostly the same, uh, but we'll go into our system settings. Awesome. So comparing this version of Kubuntu with the last version, I'm, I'm looking for the newer things in KDE. One of the newer things is this new multi-panel setup in the settings menu. And I'd also like to point out right off the bat, I noticed that the bottom bar here is the dark color, but the window is still in light mode. That's something that Kubuntu did specifically. That's not the Plasma default. We're going to go down to our display and monitor, and we will change the screen resolution to 1080p, apply. All right, that looks better. Okay, and now we will just click on this uh, install Kubuntu icon. I think we actually, yep, we have to double click. Um, desktop icons act normal now in KDE. GNOME has removed desktop icons, although standard Ubuntu still has them because it's using an older version of GNOME. KDE recently made its default behavior to have regular desktop icons, just like any other desktop environment. And here is our installer. So this looks a little bit different from the Ubuntu installer. Rather than just having dots at the bottom to signify where we are in the install, it's actually got listed out all the different steps. So we'll continue through here. Um, we got our language, keyboard layout, and wireless is skipped because we're connected to wired internet, as you can see down here. Uh, we get the same options as we do for normal Ubuntu. We can either install normal or minimal install. Normal installation you can see here includes the KDE Personal Information Management Suite, uh, whereas the minimal install does not. We will download updates and we will install third-party software. Disk setup should be next. All right, and after it probes our hard drive, we get our options. Looks a little bit different from the standard Ubuntu installer once again. We can resize our current partition and use the freed space. We can use our entire disk. We've got a couple options for LVM, which is interesting. We're going to choose manual. And when we do that, we should get, yep, just partition layout. We will choose our SSD. And we're going to use that as an ext4 file system. Format it as root. And then we've got our hard drive is going to be ext4 formatted and mounted at home. All right, and device for bootloader installation is going to be the default dev slash SDA, and we will install now. And it's going to write all of our partition changes at once. The Ubuntu installer yesterday uh, wrote the SSD's partition as soon as I selected it, uh, whereas KDE's or Kubuntu's installer here uh, waited until I had my entire setup ready before it touched the disks. So we will continue with that. Next up will be our time zone, it looks like, in our list here. As soon as we're done building the partition, there we go. 
You can see down here we're still creating our file system for our hard drive, uh, but we can go ahead and this is the correct time zone already, Chicago. And next is our user info, my name, username, password, computer's name, and we will require the password to log in. We'll see what display manager is installed by default. Um, and here we've got a slideshow. So thanks for picking Kubuntu. Combines the best of the KDE community software with Ubuntu's base. Uh, let's go through here. So Kubuntu comes with most of the applications that you need on a daily basis. Um, so it comes with Firefox, Contact, um, and the Personal Information Manager suite. It comes with LibreOffice as opposed to, I think it's Caligra is the name of the KDE Office suite, uh, but LibreOffice is pretty standard, that's fine. Uh, Discover is the software center. Comes with VLC, which is interesting, um, as well as Ocular Document Viewer, Dolphin File Manager, and Kate Text Editor. I will be uninstalling Kate and installing KWrite later because I prefer KWrite. Accessibility options, um, yep, just letting you know they're there, I guess. We've got getting help with Kubuntu and getting involved with Kubuntu. All right, I think that's a shorter slideshow than the vanilla Ubuntu slideshow, but it's to the point, it's nice. I do wanna take a look down here in our applications and see just what all comes with um, our standard Kubuntu install. I'm familiar with most of these programs, but I don't necessarily, I, I don't use contact on a daily basis. Discover obviously doesn't really work on Arch Linux for uh, package management. So I don't use all of these on a daily basis, but you know, LibreOffice we're all familiar with, that kind of thing. Um, if we open up Dolphin, we can we can see here what our file browser is going to look like. Interesting. Uh, the only shown uh, section here on the sidebar is the places section. Normally, there are some other sections that come by default with Dolphin. So that might be a Kubuntu specific tweak there, just hiding some of the sections. I usually hide the other sections anyway, so that's actually nice. Um, if we look under multimedia, looks like we don't get Kden Live installed by default. We get. Uh, Cantata, 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 music player, client. That's interesting. Let's launch that and see what it is. Hmm. Okay, so this is this is a front end for music player daemon. Wow, that is a power user music player if I've ever seen one. Interesting. Yeah, I don't have that set up right now. Um, but cool to know that's there. What else do we have here? Um, yeah, Firefox installed by default rather than Quapzilla or uh, Falcon it is now, the KDE web browser. Kubuntu gives you Firefox to match Ubuntu. KTNEF file viewer, proprietary format used by Outlook. Wow, so you can import your Outlook files and view them in Kubuntu. That's actually really cool because Kubuntu, obviously, you can tell it's got a taskbar at the bottom with a menu at the bottom left and a tray at the bottom right. It looks very similar to Windows. So people coming from Windows who might be used to using Microsoft Outlook, um, they'll be able to use this to view their, their Outlook data. That is actually, that's super, I'm impressed by that. That is uh, smart of them to include by default. K3B for disk burning, the KDE partition manager. K Sysguard, ah, NVIDIA X server settings. So it looks like Kubuntu actually comes with uh, the NVIDIA proprietary driver by default. Ubuntu definitely did not. I'll have to see if this is still here once we uh, reboot into our installed system or if that's just on the live disk, but this suggests that the NVIDIA driver is actually installed, which uh, was not the case, definitely not the case on regular Ubuntu. We do have the Muon package manager still in case you're not all a fan of uh, KDE Discover, which I'm personally not. So it's good that we still have Muon. All right, and installation is finished. We'll go ahead and restart now, and we'll see if there's anything different in the installed system than in the live system. All right, please remove the installation medium. I have removed the flash drive from my computer, and I'm pressing enter. Computer will restart. Very easy installation. It's easy to install Linux these days. Anyone can do it. And here we are booting into Kubuntu. All right, and here is our login screen. This looks like SDDM, uh, which would make sense. That's KDE's preferred display manager. So we will go ahead and log in here to our user. And just a few seconds later, we are in. Awesome, so we've got our home folder and the trash on our desktop by default. Looks like our panel is still loading in. There it goes. And we'll go ahead and adjust our screen resolution. Yeah, so like I mentioned before, normally the first thing I do in KDE Plasma is, is go and activate the dark theme. The dark theme is not activated for the windows, but it is activated by default for the bottom bar, um, which I think is a great choice because people coming from Windows are going to be used to not having a white bar at the bottom of their screen. The white bar was always kind of a 
an eyesore. Um, but of course, people coming from Windows and Mac OS are going to be used to having just normal looking windows, not necessarily the super dark, dark theme windows. If we go under workspace theme, yeah, Kubuntu is the theme here. You can see breeze dark, everything is dark like that. But then, uh, yeah, regular breeze light you can see is super light, including the bottom bar. But Kubuntu kind of blends the two, uh, which I think that's actually a really nice touch. Because this way, it looks like the classic, you know, light windows that we that we're used to, but the bottom bar looks a bit nicer. Uh, what else can we check out here? Is the NVIDIA driver actually installed by default? If we go to system, is that here? No, it is not. All right. So if we search drivers, driver manager. So the NVIDIA driver must have been installed on the live system just for compatibility reasons. Uh, but it's not actually installed by default when you do the installation, which is actually probably a good thing. So if you do want to install the proprietary NVIDIA driver, we'll just wait for it to uh, gather information here. Interesting to note, uh, we've got a show desktop button down here at the bottom right. This is our menu for our panel. Uh, we do not have any virtual desktops here. Oh, we do have a virtual desktop widget here. So if we go and add more virtual desktops, then they will automatically show up in the bottom bar here at the bottom left of our screen. It's just that we only have one desktop right now, so that widget is hidden by default. We'll go ahead and choose to use the latest NVIDIA driver 390, the latest we can get on Ubuntu through this utility. We are going to open up our settings just to demonstrate what I'm talking about with the virtual desktops. If we go to, I think it's under desktop behavior, virtual desktops here number of desktops, let's bring it up to four and apply that. And you can see down here, since that widget was already there, just hidden, um, when we add more virtual desktops, the widget automatically shows so you don't have to go and uh, and add it yourself. That's, a, that's another nice touch. I'm actually impressed. Last time I tried Kubuntu, it was really just a, a cobble of KDE software just thrown on top of, of the Ubuntu base. But uh, this actually looks like some people sat down and, and at least took a little bit of time to figure out what looks good on their desktop and what people want by default, which goes into KDE's whole motto, their, their new slogan, uh, simple by default, powerful when needed. Yeah, I think this is achieving that very well. We've got the Kubuntu logo here by default, uh, rather than having the little generic person icon that just comes with KDE. Let's open up Discover just to see what that looks like. Uh, so here's our package manager. We can get Blender, Inkscape, Krita all on the front page here. We go into applications. I don't think that Discover has, oh, well, Telegram desktop is right here. That is, that's from a regular repository. Very cool that that's in the repository. Um, I was looking to see if we have Snap applications in here. Multiverse has Dropbox. So yesterday, you might remember from my, my previous video when I installed Ubuntu, uh, there were actually proprietary applications like Discord and Slack in the Ubuntu Software Center. If we search for Discord here, all right, so the proprietary Snap applications are not in Discover. Uh, there are no Snap applications at all in Discover right now. Um, and that's actually how I prefer it. I'm not a fan of Snaps or really any other universal package format. App images are my favorite out of all of them, but uh, not a fan of snaps particularly at all since they force you to auto update. But yeah, they're not even in KDE Discover at all. I doubt that they're in Muon. We can we can check here just for kicks, but I don't think they're going to be in there. Discord. Nope, not in there. Although you can see that there are some packages that show up under Muon that don't show up in Discover. That's why it's nice to have a real package manager like Muon or Synaptic installed rather than relying on KDE Discover or, or GNOME software or things like that that hide a lot of stuff. Looks like we've got a hot corner by default in our, the top right of our screen that's going to give us an overview of all of our screens. Uh, looks like that is the only hot corner by default at all. That's an overview of all open windows. So it looks like our NVIDIA driver is installed. That will activate when we restart the computer. Uh, for now, that's about all that I wanted to see here. That is an interesting KDE experience. If you're on the fence about trying KDE, like I said, there are lots of other distros that do KDE pretty well. Uh, but this is actually, this is better than what I expected from Kubuntu. So props to the Kubuntu team for putting together a halfway decent uh, KDE implementation here. And yeah, if you're thinking about trying KDE and you're an Ubuntu user right now, I would fully recommend right now uh, installing Kubuntu and seeing how it goes. And please let me know how it goes. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them as someone with a lot of experience with the KDE desktop environment.
All right, so there we have it. Kubuntu is installed. I'm planning on taking a look at a couple of other Ubuntu flavors as well. Ubuntu Budgie and Ubuntu Mate, maybe Zubuntu as well. Uh, if there are any other versions of Ubuntu or flavors that you'd like me to take a look at, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. And if you have any questions about Ubuntu or any of its derivatives, you can ask me at my forums over at nerdonthestreet.com. For now, though, that's all I had to show you guys today. So I'm Jacob Kaufman with Nerd on the Street, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.